Welcome to the Graphing My Initials on Desmos project. The requirements for this project are that by the end, your initials must appear legibly on the graph. You must use at least 10 equations, which means you can use more. Please do not use horizontal or vertical lines, so your equations need to not be written in y equals number or x equal number format. Each line that you write will have a corresponding attribute slide that you fill out completely. Okay, all of the steps are going to be written here for you so you can read them again, but I'm going to walk through the steps here on this video. Please note that if you use more than 10 lines to write your initials, you will not need to do an attribute slide after you've done 10 attribute slides. So you can do more if you want, but you don't have to do any of the attributes after 10. Here's an example of what this might look like, and you can scroll through all of your teacher's examples here. But this teacher, that's me, has written her initials on the screen by writing an equation and restricting where that line shows up using domain or range. Okay, the process of doing this project is really qu pretty cool, but I want you to notice a couple things about my graph. When I wrote my initials KQ, I only used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines to write the K and the Q, which means I had to get creative and figure out a way to make 10 lines. So I added an exclamation point at the end. You can put a smiley face at the end, you could underline, you could make a box around it, whatever you need to do to make 10 lines, unless your initials require 10 lines to write. Okay, so here's where the project will be turned in. This is your final draft here. So your initials by the end should appear on this screen. After you finish writing one initial, you will also have to fill out one of these attribute slides for each line for the first 10. So let me walk you through how to do this. We're going to be writing equations in the following format. y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. What is this format called? If this is called point slope form because we can insert a coordinate point, x comma y, and a slope, and it will graph the line for us on Desmos. Okay, so visualize with me. Let's say I wanted to make um, remake my k, and I want my k to show up like here. That's where I want the like first part of my k to show up, which means I want this graph to show up uh, about starting at the coordinate negative 10 comma 0. Okay, so negative 10 comma 0 has an x coordinate of negative 10 and a y coordinate of 0. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. When you have minus subtracting a negative minus minus, really, that's just plus. So we clean that up. Then the only thing else I need to do to write my line is to pick a slope. I recommend always starting with a slope of 1. It's like the most basic slope. If you need your letter to go the opposite direction, you can change this to a base of negative 1. So now it's going downhill. But I need to make my K so that it's a little bit steeper because I want it to look like the side of the K. If you remember from your steeper or less steep video, then to make something steeper, I'm going to increase the number that I use for slope. So I'm going to try 2. Not steep enough for me. I'm going to try 3. Eh, I could do better. Four, five. I like four. It's everything is going to be slightly tilted, okay? But that's going to be my equation. Now, I don't want this K to show up everywhere on the graph. I need it to actually look like a K. So it's going to need to stop like here and here. Well, this is the Y value of zero. And up at the top here is a Y value of 10. If that's the bottom and the top, then I can use those numbers as my range with a bottom of zero and a top of 10. I have restricted the domain or range by putting the little squiggly lines and writing in either a domain or a range like I did here, saying it starts at the Y value of zero and ends at the Y value of 10. Now my K only shows up exactly where I want it. Cool, done. So now I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to write it on the next screen because now I need to fill out all of the attributes about my equation. Okay, so my first equation is y minus 0 equals 4 times x plus 10. So I'm going to type that in here. y minus 0 equal to 4 times x plus 10. When I press submit, it will graph the line back for me on the screen. If you see something has popped up here and that's going to happen. Things are going to keep popping up for you to answer. This says use the movable points, that's this, to crop the graph to a region that shows the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So we're basically, we're just going to zoom in like that. I press zoom graph and voila, it has zoomed for me. 
A new question has popped up though. It says, now I've written the equation in slope intercept form. So you will probably need a scratch piece of paper to do distribution and move that term over. But once you do that, you'll have an equation written in slope intercept form. My equation would be y equals 4x plus 40. When I press submit, nothing happens on my graph, unless you notice that it got a little bit darker. That's because I have graphed an additional line on top of this one. Let's say I got it wrong and I just, just didn't do this right. Do you see how a new line has popped up? That's, that's an indication that you didn't solve for y correctly, so you need to go back and fix this one. Now, once I press submit, it asks me for the slope. Well, the slope is four. I can see that in both equations. So I'm gonna type in the number four and a green line is gonna pop up. The green line has a slope that you typed in. So this green line is just a basic equation that has a slope that I typed in. Is this line parallel to my equation? Is it? Yeah, if yes, then that is the correct slope. Let's say I wrote down the wrong slope. Let's say I mixed this up and wrote down 40. These are not parallel lines. The red and the green line are not parallel. That's an indicator that you did not write down the correct slope. Once I write down the slope, the next two questions that pop up are the y-intercept of the function and the x-intercept of the function. Well, now I can look at my graph for the red line and I see that my graph crosses the y-axis at 40. So my y-intercept is 40. When I press submit, it's going to show me where the y-intercept is that I typed in. So let's say I got it wrong and I typed in 20. Is that where the y-intercept is? No. So you would know immediately that you need to redo this question. The y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. The next thing that pops up is the x-intercept. Well, that's where the graph crosses the x-axis. For me, it's negative 10. That is the x-intercept. Remember that if you accidentally get this wrong, let's say I typed in zero, that's not where the x-intercept of the red line is. So we know that we need to redo this question, negative 10. So we've talked about a lot of the attributes for this graph. We've talked about its slope, we've talked about its y-intercept and x-intercept. The last part is just to rewrite down the domain or range that you used on the other slide. Nothing is gonna show up on this screen when you do this, but if you look back at your slide over here, you can see what you've typed in. I typed in y, zero less than or equal to y less than or equal to 10, which means that I restricted the range since that's y, and I'm just gonna type it in. Once I press submit, you'll notice nothing else shows up on here, and I am done with that equation. I would go back to my initials graph, and I would start again, y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. And now you have to find another coordinate that you want to start with to create whatever letter you're doing. Follow the same process and fill out all the attributes. When you continually do this over and over again, eventually you will have your entire initials graphed on the screen. See y'all in class.